Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another Pray Together episode. We are here to do an amazing thing, really. We have the privilege to apply the truths that Jesus himself taught us about prayer. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Friends, what I understand that to be saying to us is that if we ask the Father for anything in Jesus' name, and by his name it means according to his will, something Jesus would put his name on as saying, yes, Father, this is something I want. So if we pray according to his will, he is going to ask. Now we are going to pray today for a handful of requests from brothers and sisters around the world. And we are going to lift these to the Father in faith. We're going to believe that He is faithful and He is going to hear us. And we're going to trust the Holy Spirit to guide us to pray in a way that is according to Jesus' will or in His name. And we are going to wait and we are going to see the answers come about. So we turn right now into our time of prayer for brothers and sisters across the world. And I ask you, friends, to pray with me. If you have a prayer request or a praise that you would like to have included in a future episode of this Friday Pray Together episode, please go to carrygreen.com, C-A-R-E-Y, green like the color, dot com slash prayer, and leave us your request or your praise. Our Father, we come to you on behalf of these brothers and sisters all around the world. We are looking for you to turn your ear toward us and to hear our prayers, to hear our prayers with a heart of compassion, with a, an eye and a heart toward answering these prayers. And so, Lord Jesus, we begin here by praying for our sister Stella, who is writing to us from India, for her daughters to walk with Jesus. She gives us their names, Bano and Mahima to walk with Jesus. She wants to see their hearts transformed. And Lord Jesus, we ask you to do what only you can do through the power of your Holy Spirit, to begin bringing light to the blind, to begin bringing a a type of transformation that we as human beings can only guess at in terms of how it happens and what it is like. But Lord, we know that these two young women, Bono and Mahima, can turn their hearts to you as you open their eyes to see. And so, Lord, we ask you to do that. We thank you so much for a faithful mother like Stella who is praying for her children. We ask you, Lord, to give them transformation, give them a change of heart. As Paul describes it, move them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. And Lord, next we come alongside our brother Mark who is writing this to us from the United States. He's asking us to pray for him. He has a herniated disc in his back, and there is much pain that is coming from this disc. He says he has been depressed dealing with his back pain, and he has recently lost his job on top of it, and so he has bills that he cannot pay. So, Lord, we lift Mark to you, knowing you are the provider of all mankind. You pour out your grace on us. You give us breath and life and everything else. And we ask you, Lord, to reach down and bring relief to Mark's back, bring healing, bring uh, that, that herniated disc back into a proper size, Lord, and cause it to function properly so that his back and the pain that he's feeling would be healed, Lord. Do it in Jesus' name, Lord. We ask as well that you give him opportunity and open doors for a new way of providing for himself that his bills would not pile up any further, that you would actually help to take care of the bills that he has at this point, Lord. Be his great protector and provider. And Lord Mark also is asking us to pray for his mother who is recovering from a stroke. Lord God, we understand the need for medical intervention, and I'm sure she's receiving all kinds of care, but Lord, we ask that you would reach down into her brain, into the the places where those uh, ruptures have happened and that stroke has occurred, and Lord, to bring healing. And that even on a deeper level, Lord, 
where the damage has happened to her memory or perhaps her bodily function or whatever is is occurred because of the stroke, Lord, you would bring healing there as well. You would enable her to recover. You would enable, enable her to recover fully. And Lord, protect her and shield her from any further harm. We ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, our sister, Licia, who has written to us from the United States as well, is asking us to pray very simply for health and biopsy results. Father, it sounds like there is some kind of a a sickness going on where they've had to do a test to see what a mass in her body is or a situation is that's going on. And Lord, I pray that you would cause every fear, every concern to vanish as those results come back. I pray that you would enable your glory, your grace, your might to be seen through the results of this test. But Lord, should it come back in a way that's negative, a way that brings fear, a way that shows a cancer or something else that's of concern, Lord, we ask that you would touch Licia in a very powerful way of healing, that you would drive that sickness from her body, that you would enable her to be healed, whether that's through your divine touch or whether that's through the hand of a surgeon. Lord, we don't know what your means might be, but we know that you are good and that you are capable of healing. And through the provision of Christ on the cross, you have provided for our healing. So Lord, we ask you, Apply that healing in our sister's case, in Jesus' name. Father, we come alongside our brother, J. Mark, who is writing to us from the Philippines. And he has been married for 13 years, and all that time has been living with his in-laws. He is asking us to pray that he will be able to have a means of stable income that will provide enough for his family to move out into a new house in the Philippines. Lord, I ask that you would just raise up in front of J. Mark an opportunity that he never saw coming, something that will provide not just for him and his wife, but also, Lord, for any others in their family so that they can be independent, they can be set up in a home of their own, that all of the healthy things that can come about from living as a family in your own household could come about, Lord, in your name. We ask you to do that. He is also asking us to pray for his family. He is starting a new job as an insurance agent. Lord, I don't know how compensation works for insurance agents in the Philippines, but I do know that it's possible that that could be the answer to prayer right there. And so, Lord, we ask you to enable him to do well. Teach him how to care for his customers in a way that enables him to be a great salesman that he is providing a service they need. He's doing it with their best interests in mind. He's doing it to bring them to a place of purchasing, not out of coercion, not out of uh, any kind of manipulation, but out of great care for them and great service to them. Lord, we ask you to do that in Jesus' name. J. Mark also asks us to pray for his cousin, Marlon, to know Christ. And so, Jesus, we ask you again on Marlon's behalf, to reach down into his heart, to open up the eyes of his understanding, to see Jesus in the glorious and grand light as Savior that he really is, or show him the glory and the majesty of knowing Jesus as his Lord, or break through the darkness and cause sight to the blind in Jesus' name. Father, our next request is an anonymous request from a sister in the United States She's asking us to pray for her granddaughter, who is 12 years old, and she is experiencing great anxiety. She has told her grandmother that she worries a lot about everything around her and that her mind doesn't stop. Lord, along with this grandmother, we just feel a tug of our heart. Our heart goes out to this young lady, and Lord, we want our heart to go out in our prayers to you. Lord, cause us to remember to pray for this young woman not just today, but after today, Lord, that we would be able to sustain her and encourage her in faith and in strength through our prayers, Lord. This grandmother tells us that her granddaughter does not live in a godly home, unfortunately, though she has shared Christ with her and about getting to know Jesus. Lord, it is very hard for her in her home situation. I can just imagine, Lord, that there's all kinds of things going on that not only cause concern and worry for her, but are a source of stress and are a source of 
of anxiety, Lord. We pray you, Lord, would heal her heart. You would heal her mind. You'd bring her to a place of transforming faith that she would be able to rest in the God of creation, in his powerful hand, that she would be able to know beyond a shadow of any doubt that her heart is secure, her life is secure because you are her God, Lord. Give her that great stability and give her that through the example of her grandmother and through the the gospel message as it's preached around her, Lord. Cause it to penetrate the powers of darkness that hold her captive to a lie and enable her to be set free in Jesus' name. Lord, next we come alongside our sister, Kareen, who is writing to us from Jamaica. She says that she would like us to pray for her marriage, for she and her husband, whose name is Rashane, they're going through a really difficult time and she's requesting prayer for their marriage, Lord. We ask you to reach down into each of their hearts and bring the humility needed to confess wrongs that have been done, to do away with pride and to rest in the forgiveness that you provide, Lord, that they would confess to each other where they have hurt each other, that forgiveness would be given and repentance would truly happen and restoration would come about as a result of what they've done. Lord, we ask that you give them a humility to find a godly couple who could come alongside them to counsel them, to guide them, to help them in their marriage to learn how to communicate well, learn how to consider each other as more important than themselves. And Lord, we ask you to give Kareen and Rashane just a great sense of your presence in their marriage. Lord, create in them a fear of you that causes them each to love the other well and to care for each other. Lord, I pray for Rashane as the man in the home to take his role and his responsibility as spiritual leader seriously, Lord, that he would pursue with great diligence the closeness to you that he needs to carry the responsibility and weight of the leader of the family with grace and with wisdom and with the power that only your Holy Spirit can bring. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Father, we come alongside our sister Stacy, writing to us from the United States. She says her dad has fallen away from God and her parents' marriage is suffering greatly from it. Lord, my heart breaks when I hear this, when I hear a man who is, who is commissioned by you to be the leader of the family, is the one who has fallen away from you. And Lord, I just know from experience watching this happen, the damage that happens as a result. And so, Lord, we ask for this man, you know his name, to be convicted in his heart of hearts by your Holy Spirit of his straying, of his turning away, of his lack of faith and his lack of leadership, Lord, and that you would cause him to see that he will one day stand before you. He will give an answer for the stewardship that you have placed in his hands of being a husband and a father who is to lead his family to you, Lord, and give him the humility to repent to turn to you in faith, to be strengthened with power through your spirit in his inner man, Lord, and bring about a radical and dramatic change for your good, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Father, we come alongside another sister writing from the U.S. Her name is Rachel, and she and her fiancé are getting married tomorrow. And I just praise you, Lord, for this celebration, this, this covenant ceremony that has been planned so that they can become husband and wife, Lord. She is praying. She is asking us to pray that the two of them will always put you first in their marriage, that they will love each other selflessly, that they will remain faithful and in love through all the ups and downs. Lord, I ask that you would guide them both in humility. You would give them that Philippians 2 kind of humility where they, like Jesus, consider each other more important than themselves that they, like Jesus, lay down their rights. They lay down their particular position in the marriage and instead serve one another. Lord, we ask that you would guide them and strengthen them to be amazingly wise in their first years of marriage, to know how to care for each other, how to uh, be 
together in a way that brings great glory to you, Lord. Cause them to consciously put you at the center of their relationship. And Lord, I pray for the young man in this relationship, Lord, as the spiritual leader in the home, that you would grant him wisdom. You'd grant him deep spiritual strength and conviction that gives him a drive to guide his wife and guide any future children into relationship with Jesus and into ongoing growth. Lord, we ask you to just stir up in his heart that desire. Don't let him coast in his faith, but Lord, cause him to pedal with all the strength that you provide toward growth and towards uh, just a, a vibrant relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we have another anonymous request that comes to us from the United States. This sister is asking us to pray that their family will be blessed with a healthy fourth child and that she can become an architect. Lord, I pray first off just for this desire to have children. That's a wonderful, godly desire. I pray, Lord, that if they are trying or if she knows she's conceived and they are praying for the pregnancy to be healthy, Lord, that you would bring about your will in this. We know that a godly home is one of the most powerful uh, organizations, one of the most power in, powerful institutions you've created because it's where godly children can be raised and where the culture can be turned around from the inside out through the birth and growth and, and uh, maturity, maturing of godly children, Lord. So I pray for this family, Lord, that you give them that vision. You'd enable them to move forward in faith toward this fourth, fourth child, Lord. This mother is also asking us to pray that she could become an architect, Lord. I don't know where she is in her education. I don't know anything about the detail. But Lord, I ask you to bring about your will in this situation, that you would enable her to be a mother first as the scriptures command. That is her best role and her greatest role of responsibility. I pray you give her the vision for that. And Lord, if this idea of her becoming an architect is one that you intend to come about, Lord, you give her the open doors. You give her the will and the way to step through those doors. And Lord, I pray that you would do that in Jesus' name. This sister is also asking us to pray for families and children that need a home. Lord, amen, there are many homeless, there are many displaced because of wars, because of economic issues. We pray, Jesus, that around the world, you would provide for your people. You would provide for those who are in need, the orphans and the widows and the families that are without a home. Lord, do that in Jesus' name. This sister also wants us to pray for those who are struggling with loneliness, that they would be able to find Jesus and find peace and love. Amen, Lord, we ask you to show yourself to those who are lonely. Show yourself to those who are in need and grant great grace that they would see you as you really are and that their heart of hearts would be drawn to you in faith. And Father, we continue praying for our sister Sumin, who has been so faithful in prayer and has asked us to pray many times. She writes to us from South Korea and she has an upcoming final interview on July 14th. She says this is the very first interview she's had that's gotten to the final round, and she is finding herself to be very nervous. It looks to her like the perfect opportunity for her to receive a job right after her graduation, and at the same time she knows that this all depends on your will, and that it could also be your plan that there is a different job or another circumstance for her. Lord, I love that she is thinking about both sides of this and both outcomes and that she is submitting her heart to you, Lord. She says that regardless, she wants to put everything in your hands and have the faith that you have just the right plan for her regardless of the results of this upcoming interview. Amen, Lord. I couldn't pray that any better. I know that that's your will for her is for her heart to be unhindered by fear, unhindered by doubt, because she's so confident that you are working a great plan in her life, regardless of the outcome. And Lord, what she's asking us to pray to me is such a humble and wise perspective. She's asking us to pray that she will do her best to be able to speak without trembling during the interview, to give you great glory, that she will have no regret once the interview is done. Lord, I pray you would empower her. 
you would strengthen Sue Men with the power of your Holy Spirit to be confident in her skills, confident in her knowledge, to be a demonstration of the person and the power of Jesus in this interview, that they would see the personality and the skills that you've given her and whether or not that is the best fit on their team. Lord, I pray she would be a light in this dark world through this interview, Lord. We don't know exactly how that's going to come out, but Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name to bring it about through your power. Our sister Sonia has written from the United States, and she is asking us to pray together in thanks to God for his grace and his mercy and his love. And amen, Lord. We as your children walk in grace and mercy and love every day of our lives. We wake to the knowledge and the assurance that through Christ we are eternally forgiven for every sin, for every doubt, for every way in which we've turned from you. We walk in that mercy knowing that you could rightly judge us as guilty in the courtroom of heaven, but you don't because of the sacrifice of Jesus, that grace that you poured out on us through his propitiatory death, Lord. We walk as humble people before you. I praise you that Sonia is aware of this and wants to pray that we would continue to walk in that grace, in that mercy, in that love. Lord, thank you for being such a good God to us. Thank you for giving us of yourself through your son. Thank you for being the God who has made a way when there was no way for us. Lord, we rest in you. We are confident in what you've done for us and ask you to increase our faith and make us gloriously steadfast in your name. And Father, we pray along with our sister Kiki, who's writing to us from Hong Kong. She is asking us to pray that you would grant her peace in her soul. Lord, she wants to be confident in your ability and in your willingness to heal her both mentally and physically, and that she would always have in mind what the scripture says, that a joyful heart is good medicine. Lord, we love, I just love this attitude Kiki has, and I love that she's asking for prayer because, Lord, we all need to be reminded of truths like this, that joy, joy in you brings us to a place of peace, a place of contentment that ministers to us on a soul level, no matter what's going on physically or mentally, emotionally. But Lord, along with Kiki, we know that you can heal her, whatever is going on mentally and physically. Lord, that you can reach in and touch in. Lord, I believe you're a good God. I believe that you want to do good for your children. And so for your daughter Kiki, Lord, would you reach down And bring healing to her body. Bring healing to her mind if that's what's needed, Lord. If there's emotional issues going on as well, Lord, bring about healing. Bring peace to her soul. Grant her the confidence to know you are faithful. And for her to be able to rest in you, Lord Jesus, we ask in Jesus' name. Father, we come alongside our sister Malia in prayer as she writes to us from the United States. She is asking us to pray regarding a situation in which her mother has found herself where she's being removed from her home. Uh, This sounds like this circumstance is one where the landlord is wanting to sell and make more money or, you know, maybe another rental situation. Lord, I don't know what the situation is, but her mother only has 30 days to find a four bedroom home for the family that they can afford, Lord. She feels like it's just not enough time. This situation is very sad. And Lord, I'm sure it feels very overwhelming and oppressive and impossible. But Lord, we rejoice knowing you are the God of the impossible. You have told us in your word, with man it might be impossible, but nothing is impossible for God. And so Lord, we rest in that truth and we turn to you in faith alongside our sister Malia. And we ask you, Lord, to provide for this family provide a home, provide an apartment, provide a townhome, provide something where they can move in, they can pay what they're able to pay, and Lord, that they would be provided for. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. We ask you to bring it about through your divine provision, through the connections that you have through your people. 
Lord, bring it about in a great provision that increases Malia's faith, that increases her mother's faith, that increases the faith of the entire family, Lord. It shows them that you, God, are on your throne and you are bringing about good for your people. We ask it in Jesus' name. Lord God, we have another request coming in from a sister writing from the United States about a situation regarding her, the education of her children. She's a single mom, has three elementary age children, and she lives in a place where she feels the indoctrination that's going on in the schools is very severe. And she has had a number of issues with the public school system. And so she has been able to get her children into a private Christian school for the next school year. But she needs help in providing for the finances to cover the cost of tuition. Lord, with her being the sole financial provider for her children, we ask you to raise up in her a great faith, a great confidence that you as her king, you as her provider and her father will take good care of her and of her children. And Lord, in all of this, we ask you to bring about the money, bring about scholarships, bring about financial aid, whatever it is that can provide for her children in this situation. We ask you to do it in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray you would strengthen Terry's heart. You would strengthen her confidence in you. Lord, that you would give her uh, just a, a great smile from heaven on her soul as she knows that you are pleased with her caring for her children and trying to shield them from the lies that are happening in various educational institutions these days. Lord, I pray that you would give her the means and even provide outside of her ability, Lord, to show her your great care. We are so thankful for your goodness and for your ability to care for us. Lord, we come alongside our brother Ethan, who's writing to us from the United States. We thank you for all you've done in his life. We've prayed for him weeks before and are, are grateful for the ways in which you have provided. And Lord, he is asking us to pray with him that you would provide great peace in their home. They've gone through a lot of things in the last month, and now it seems that their dog is getting ready to pass on. Uh, don't know how old the dog is, but it sounds like maybe by age or some sickness. And Lord, all of this is happening just eight weeks before their first child is to arrive. Lord, I pray for the peace that Ethan is asking for. I pray that he and his wife will be able to rest in you, knowing that the timing and the events of our lives are ordained by you according to your good pleasure and that you bring good into our lives as your children often disguised by difficulty and disguised in the garb of hardship because Lord, you're growing us spiritually from the inside out. You are using the difficulties much like a weight in the weight room to strengthen our spiritual muscle and to give us the hope and the faith that we need. Lord, I ask you to give Ethan and his wife the eyes to see those realities. Lord, his attitude seems to be a very good one. I praise you for being faithful in his life. He says, even through all these things, they want to praise God for allowing them the chance to be parents and guiding them through, through such a long journey toward this pregnancy. Lord, we are grateful that you have provided this life in the womb, that you are bringing this pregnancy to completion, Lord, with just a, a few weeks a handful of weeks until this child is born. We ask you to give great grace and peace and strength for Ethan's wife's body, that she will be able to deliver this child healthily and strong. Lord, that you would calm every fear, that you would strengthen their resolve and their confidence to give you glory in this situation. And Lord, that in your providence, you would provide greatly for them in every way that they need, whether they see that need or not. Lord, that they would know confidently that you as their God are caring for them. And Father, our final request today comes from a sister from the United States, Meredith, who says, first off, she would like to pray for her sister and herself to be able to pass their driving test. They're going to take it on July 15th. She is so thankful that you have blessed them with a car that you've given to her dad, even though he was unemployed, and then you quickly gave him a job right after that. And he has been devoting so much time to teach his daughters how to be good drivers. And they want to make him proud. Lord, I'm so thankful for what sounds like a, a healthy and warm relationship between his dad and his daughters. Lord, I'm grateful for Meredith. I'm grateful for her heart of gratitude 
And I'm grateful for her, for her desire to make her dad proud, to make him uh, encouraged with his efforts. And so, Lord, I ask that Meredith and her sister would be able to remember and recall the skills they've learned, the knowledge they have of the rules of the road, of the ways to drive safely, to be defensive drivers, to be effective in the way that they brake and that they use the gas, the way they turn. And Lord, that emotion would be minimized in the driving process. It's not that emotion is a bad thing, but Lord, sometimes we can overreact out of emotion, Lord. Give them clear heads, give them clear hearts, enable them to do well on this test and to not be flustered by the fact that there's a a, a teacher or a, a a proctor in the car with them, Lord. Give them what they need to do well at these tests, Lord. And continue to raise up in them these hearts of gratitude that Meredith has expressed. Lord, Meredith also is wanting to pray for all of us Morning Mindset listeners and the Christians, brothers and sisters around the world. She says, with each passing day, it's more and more evident that judgment is upon us. She calls it the end times, Lord. We don't know if this is really the end times, but we do know that you judge mankind for sin and for wickedness. And at many times, turning us over to our sinfulness, as it appears has happened in this world, is that judgment. Lord Meredith is wanting us to pray that we would not be afraid of the judgment, but as your people will have confidence and comfort that you are doing good through these things, you are bringing about your righteous judgment, and that we are secure. We will gain entry into the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ, and that Jesus is our King. Lord, we ask that you give us all the perseverance and the, the wherewithal to shine the light of Jesus in this dark time, that we would be the ones who are able to be there with confidence, with strength, with hope, as the circumstances turn sour and as bad things happen, that we would be the light that shows others the glory of Jesus and that many would turn to you in these dark days, Lord. We are so thankful for your presence, so thankful for your provision through Jesus. Lord, we are grateful that we have the privilege of being your children and ask you to shine through us, Lord. I pray with Meredith for all the Morning Mindset listeners, Lord, that you would strengthen them, you would cause them to be vessels through which your message goes out into the world and that you would bring great glory to yourself in this time, Lord. All of history is in your hand. Nothing is happening outside your control. You are bringing about great glory for yourself, Lord. So please, in Jesus' name, cause us to be your faithful people during this time. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you for praying with me today. It is just such a privilege to take our requests, our concerns, and our, our, the weight of burden that we carry and lay it all at the foot of the cross, knowing that Jesus is our intercessor and he is our open door into the throne room of heaven. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Friends, if you have a request you would like to have included on a future episode, go to carrygreen.com slash prayer. That's C-A-R-E-Y, green like the color, dot com slash prayer. We would love to hear from you and would love to pray with you and for you. Friends, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying with me on these Friday episodes. Please pass these along to anyone you know who is a prayer, a prayer warrior, someone who will take this seriously and will pray for the requests. Join me again next week for another Friday Pray Together episode.